Hello everyone! My name's Nina, and I'll be your host as I guide you through the glorious world of East Side Kochi. This would be anything east of Kami City. You can get to it by car, bus, the JR train line, or Gomen Nahadi train line. We'll begin our tour in the westernmost part of the east side of Kochi, Kami City. This just happens to be where I live. Our first stop is the Ryugado Cave. This cave is supposedly one of the three biggest stalactite caves in all of Japan. There are a couple of different courses you can take when visiting the cave. One is the general admission tour that takes you through the safest parts of the cave. But there's also an adventure course, for which you have to pay a little bit more for. But this course is longer, and will take you deep down into the real inner workings of the cave. I've been told it can get a little tight, so be careful if you're even slightly claustrophobic. Not too far away from the caves would be the Anpanman Museum. Anpanman is every child's favorite superhero. His head is made from bread and filled with sweet bean paste called Anko. You can find such bread at any bread shop in Japan. It's called Anpan. Anpanman will fly all over the world looking for people in need. Eventually, he'll find some lost soul who is dying of hunger, and he'll save them by giving them a bit of his head to eat. And then, He'll fly back to his bakery home, where Mr. Old Man Baker will bake him a new head. Unless, of course, he comes across his evil enemy Biking Man, also known as Germ Man. But no worries, Anpan Man has his entire crew of bread-like friends to come and help him out. From this point, I guess you should know about the Gomen Nahari train line. It goes from Gomen Station in Nankoku, all the way out to Nahari. But sorry guys for anyone out in Umaji, Kitagawa, Muroto, or Toyo. It doesn't go out that far. But Takashi Yanase, who wrote on Panman, is actually from Kochi, and when the train line opened in 2002, he created special characters for each station. The characters are specially designed for each station to represent something special for that area. Next stop on our trek east is the city of Konan. Konan is made up of three smaller towns, the first one being Noichi. Noichi Town has the only Noichi Town Zoo in all of Japan. There are all manner of animals, ranging from cute little furry rodents to giraffes, seals, monkeys, and tons more. Here in Kochi, the fishermen are especially fond of drinking, so what better way to have a good time than hold a festival for the sole purpose of making everyone get sloshed? In Akaoka City, just next to Noichi, sometime around April, hundreds of people gather on the beach to watch the annual sake-chugging Dorome Festival. There are a number of events that include eel catching for the children, singing and dancing, but of course the main event is drinking sake from an oversized sake cup. Men must drink 1.8 liters, and women drink 0.8 liters. The current records are 12 seconds for men and 10 seconds for women. I say, start practicing now and you'll be ready to compete in April. More than the Dorome Festival, Akaoka is actually most famous for the Ekin Festival, which is held on the third weekend in June. Around the end of the Edo period, a pretty morbid guy by the name of Hirose Kinzo also known as Ekin, painted a bunch of pictures with tons of blood, gore, demons, and some other really creepy stuff. They pull out these paintings on the evening of the festival. Some of the creepier ones only come out at these two nights every year, and then they're put on display and lit only by a single candle. Also, literally right around the corner is a fairly new kabuki theater that will hold productions written about some of the paintings themselves. I highly recommend it, but only if you have a strong stomach. Going a little further into Konan City, and along the coast, is Yashi Park, a very popular beach spot for the locals. You can usually find some sort of event happening here during the summer months. Yashi has everything a beach needs, a picnic area, boardwalk, playground for the kids, and jellyfish-free waters. And of course, 
Entry is free because having fun in the sun is priceless. Right along the water, you'll find a number of gift shops and restaurants that include the critically acclaimed Masala Indian Curry Restaurant. Stop in for some Japanese-style Indian curry. Next to Yashi Park is the small but historic Yasu Port. It's one of the oldest stone harbors in Japan, and one of its main features is a drawbridge. I'm sorry to say I don't have any shots of it here but it's a nice little place to visit if you ever find yourself in the area. Coming up next on our tour is the not-so-famous village of Geisei. Aside from being a cute little town with friendly locals, it also has a large saltwater indoor pool, so you can get the feeling of swimming in the ocean even during the winter months.